Your divisions really blame me out because you divided between academia, practicals, and so on. I am a little bit of everything. Uh, I am in the academia, but I love my practical world. As a matter of fact, it's the only way that I have a horse and a swimming pool in my summer house. Therefore, uh, I, I don't distinguish between my academia in my practical world. And when the, the, the cement company or other company give me money to do my research, I don't even think about European funding. Now, what I'm going to share with you guys is uh, some thoughts about risk communication. It's very complicated because when we talk about risk communication, all of you create ideas about your own uh, you know, interests and you define uh, your own uh, risk communication. Then risk communication without risk communication is basically a blowout song. But one important thing that I want, after the conclusions that you draw from your old discussions, uh, it, this is very interesting. That is, we have to involve, we have to discuss, we have to people in, make them in board and discuss and to get interest. First of all, what I'm working on, I'm basically, I work also in security inside the companies, but basically I am the guy that they, wa they ask when the community is on fire. You remember? My roof is on fire. Exactly. When, for instance, when the cement, kill, uh, cement company wants to use waste as fuel, and they have a huge amount of problems with the community. When someone wants to construct a hazardous uh, waste treatment site, hospital, I work on hospital waste for the last 20 years. I work on hazardous waste for the last 20 years, and so on. When people really get mad, with each other because they don't agree on doing something. And they ask me, OK? Therefore, uh, that's my kind of risk communication, although I also work inside uh, organizations in security and risk management. But what I'm talking about today is more, more about these confrontational styles. Uh, 